So guys, welcome back to part 2 of our Summer Tactics video. I was thinking about there's a few of my older videos I've sort of included a lot of lures that were discontinued and stuff. And that's great to see the older lures and see where sea trout fishing sort of came from. But looking at these lure selections, I've sort of been focusing this year on a lot of Scandinavian style lures and I sort of want to make this lure selection that anyone can go online and anyone will be able to pick these lures up. So jump straight into it. These are in no particular order but these are lures I have been using and as maybe a few of you have seen we've been having quite a bit of success this summer and summer. Okay so starting off I'll be more coast. Love this lure for speed spinning. 16 grams. Talked about it before in other videos. But I uh, had my personal bass fish on the Hollow Macro variety. There's quite a few versions of it. Uh, there's the Baltic Horn. And I think this might be called Candy Floss. Won't be doing your lure selections, just what I'll tend to do is focus on the brighter lures on the cloudier, duller days. And then on the brighter days, all these go for more natural, realistic representation. Sure, really, these are mostly horn fry representations, but uh, very good lures. 16 grams and they cast like absolute bullets just a basic line through concept great wee tip is if you're fishing your line through lures you can wrap them up in easy foam rigs and then have your lure it's wrapped up in the rig ready to go when you're done fishing good hook up you have it again brilliant lures when you stop, you'll get the rotational spin back and you see how love it. And those lures just hang back. It should almost seem like a sand eel trying to bury itself back in to the sand again. As soon as you reel it on, that's generally when you'll get the strikes. Next up is the Western FD60. Again, another rotational lure. What I like with these lures is you, you can hang them all most in the tide. If you're retrieving these really quick, just subsurface and then stop, you're just going to let it run back maybe five, six rotations at the most and crank it on again. As soon as you start that retrieval, what you'll find is if there's a sea trout falling, it, he's going to hit it straight away. Uh, in terms of colour pattern for these, I think this is called yellow headlight or something. Better off using this type of pattern when you've got the calm, clear conditions. Doesn't really matter, sunny, cloudy. But if the water's clear, you want to be representing sort of the sand needs to be a bit more natural. Green bag. See the yellow. Are. For if it's dull, I like to go for something really bright. This is an ultra white violet pickled sardine. I think the pattern's called. Again, using these lures last year, I had some real good fish. One good fish almost pulled the rock out of my hands using this pickled sardine one. So, again, these lures are easy to source. Definitely have a look at these. Well worth investing. I think they're only running up like five or six pounds at the most. Cast like bullets, 16 grams. Actually, the fixed version of the old Western D60 F360. Check them out for yourself, great lure. Now, next up is the Savage Gear Line through Sandy. Now, I don't know honestly how I feel about these lures. Starting off, I used to use these, and to be honest with you, I didn't rate them at all. But after watching a few videos of the Scandinavian boys, 
I went back and started using them at the start of the year now. I haven't a whole lot of success with hookups with them, which I guess isn't really great for a fishing there, but in terms of exciting takes and fish coming in after me, I've certainly had my first share of them this year with these lures. One huge fish come in after this natural sand eel pattern. I reckon he was about 10 pounds, but he just sheared off the sea trout there in the last minute. Again, colour variations when should we use them. Sand eel, natural pattern, as I say. Great, clear water. These will show up a tree. The way you want to work these lures is as soon as I hit the water, start reeling. And I mean reeling as quick as you possibly can. Don't you worry if you think a sea trout won't catch it, it will catch it. But what you want to do is be creating a V, a bow underneath the surface. And the best time to be doing that is when it's flat calm. These lures, when it's flat calm, reeling them in as quick as you can, just under the surface. And I promise you, you will have some pretty spectacular takes from them. And try UV variations again. Stall die. Show up an absolute cracker. What I'll do with these is just reel five, six, seven turns of the reel handle and then stop for a wee second, gentle twitch, and then get back five, six, seven turns of the reel handle again. Stop for a wee second, twitch, and on you go. There is the fixed version of the sand eel again. You should create wee ball burns in these ones. The only problem I find with these smaller ones is the fish don't seem to want to chase them as much. That's not to say that they won't chase them, they do. And certainly the UV variation here, you can see the motor oil UV. It's a great one for when it's really, really dull. You show up cracker. But if I was personally to pick in between the two, I would go for the 93 option. But that's not to say the fixed version isn't just as good. It can be on certain days, but consistency, I would go for the 93. Bigger line throughs running in 15 gram weights. You don't have a problem at all casting these out. And what I would do is, if you are fishing the bigger 15 gram ones, cast them as far as you can. Even if you see a fish jumping, cast away over the top of them and retrieve it back towards where you've seen the fish splashing. You do not want to be casting these straight on top of the sea trout because they do make quite a splash. They're not the most subtle baits when they land in the water so cast them way over the top if you see fish and draw them through as quick as you can and you will have some spectacular takes of these lures next up a couple of lures i've caught a lot of fish on over the years it's the rest and salties again really easy to source online Get yourself a few pattern variations. Again, green olive can be the sand deal, can be the stickle bags that we chase after. Here you can see the pickle sardine version. Hern fry, pure and simply, nothing else. And at this time of year, what you'll find is the water's coming down, the small hern fries. Again, you can go to just almost a neutral colour like the brown here. I'll represent your gobies and stuff. Sea trout still eating plenty of gobies at this time of year. Now the wee lime free version. And you can see this is smaller than the fixed versions, at 8 grams. This gives you a wee bit of better hookup power so it does using the wee lime throughs. But again, I haven't lost too many fish using the fixed versions of the salties. Smaller ones, 12 grams. A few different patterns to match what you could be finding in the shore at the minute. Or the line through. Again, all available. Not too hard to source. Great wee lures. If you're fishing somewhere with a lot of current, these maybe aren't the lures for you. The better fish in the slack at the top of the tide when there isn't as much water current will draw through better. What you'll find is sometimes they have a tendency to skate when they're fishing through a lot of current so again think your tidal influences when you're fishing these lures generally uh, what you want to be doing is top of the tide 
or somewhere with very low tidal flow. These lures will work the best for you in there. Last but not least, on our hard body lures is the ISP Seekers. I've been following the channel recently. I'm sure I'll not need to say too much about the Seekers. These lures are just unreal. What I love about them is cast as far as you can possibly cast with a, a 12 gram lure, 16 gram lure, whatever happened variation. What I go for is 16 gram variety. Might seem like a little bit heavy, but again, you'll cover a lot of water when you're sea trout fishing. And covering as much water as you can is a real big advantage. Being able to cast these right up along the edge of the shoreline for maybe 70 80 yards, like it's definitely an advantage. Color varieties again, you can go for motor oil UV for really dark conditions, you show up UV red spots. But I feel about the UV red spots, but on these lures, they don't seem to do any harm, and as I say, on the dark days, they work well. Another one for the dark days, the pearl wave one. Like about these lures as these wee strike points, wee UV beads in them, and they're rotating around, it gives the fish a home and point. And what you'll generally find is every time they strike, they do strike down the bottom. So you've always a good chance of hooking up on their fish. Everybody's seen this one that's following the channel at the minute. This is my personal favourite. You fish these really quick. That's my advice. Keep them just sort of subsurface. Reeling again, five, six, seven turns of handle. Let it stop. Let it wriggle back a bit. Crank them on again. Again, five, six turns of handle. Let it crank back. Pull them on again. Strip these right down. If you want this pattern, and you'll get this lovely wishbone raw silver colour underneath. Follow them with a black marker on top to give you a black bar or bait fish. I honestly don't know how many fish have lost. The last thing is the downside of these lures. The sea trout seem to be unbelievably good at levering these out of their mouths. I thought tonight maybe a single hook would help, but as you can see, the single hook was bent straight out by five pounds right so just watch your gauge your singles if you happen to be using them don't use anything too fine well, I actually thought this would have been strong enough but evidently not so try and go down to a real good thick heavy gauge hook if you're singling up there on them but again do not be surprised if you lose a lot of fish in these lures from them throwing them it's just the downside of a 16 gram lure Lastly, just want to have a really quick look at what we've got in terms of our dropper flies. I don't always fish the dropper fly at this time of year, but sometimes when the fish are being really tricky, I'll throw the dropper on, throw the line through lures. Really simple things. This Australian tan shrimp is usually one of my first flies I'll throw on. Quite simple. Nothing too fancy, man. Really. But when you've got your line through lure rotating backwards and you've got your shrimp coming dropping down and the two come along it does seem to be a very very effective method of triggering off the strikes so as I say Australian tan shrimp like the fish really natural looking flies best they can they see epoxy finish to the top of them and the sun hits through them they really do look like the Baltic prawns that you find in around the shore this time of year. Sometimes you'll have to fish a wee tiny tiny fly to represent the small gamma shrimp. Something like this wee UV shrimp. Very small. That's what it represents your gamma's quite well. Again traditional flies don't rule them out. Things like this wee tiny Rubens gadget. Looks really small. 
and you'd wonder why I bring fish in one but don't dismiss these things sometimes the big fish really do want them and they are quite effective occasionally a little fish would be a fish representation maybe something like this sandy representation on the jobber although generally focus on the shrimp pattern so well if I am putting on the chopper but that's just a personal preference certainly flies like this a few other channels on YouTube I'm sure you've seen this particular pattern catching fish a certain man with a bombard again small fish representations don't dismiss the originals Mr Falkus is medicine here is as good as any sometimes and the fish are being really fickle you can just drop a wee small traditional fly like this onto your jobber and that really can take off just sometimes you'll find the clear conditions so you try to get that wee bit picky and something really small can just trigger off a bite from them in terms of my leader lines again touched on it in my old videos good old Berkeley training eight pound find it online anyway that stuff is invisible fish can't pick it up at all I've been using it now for well over a decade it hasn't let me down in snaps or anything good knot and strength and as I say most importantly fish can't see it lastly swivels for lime fruits you want something small fish can't see it if you go and put a big size eight swivel on it's going to show up too much in the water Something small like these wee Barclays swivels, size 12, 35 pound breaking strain. It's going to more than hold anything you're likely to hurt sea trout fishing in the UK. But that's about it folks. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the content, give me a big thumbs up. It helps me grow the channel. And if you'd like to subscribe, it's greatly appreciated. All best guys.